Here's what's been making the business headlines in sub-Saharan Africa this week. Ethiopia is not yet being let back into a United States duty-free trade program that had been a boon for its textile sector. Access was cut to the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, or AGOA, in January 2022 over the conflict in Tigray. But US Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Addis Ababa on Wednesday praised Ethiopia's progress in implementing a peace deal. Certainly we share the aspiration of uh, Ethiopia returning to AGOA, and as it continues to um, uh, implement the cessation of hostilities uh, agreement, uh, it will, it's clearly moving moving in the right direction. Africa's biggest gold mine is set to be created in Ghana through a joint venture announced by Goldfields and Anglo Gold Ashanti. The companies are combining their Takwa and Idwapri mines, but said they are not considering a full-scale merger. Nigeria has topped a list of countries withholding revenues earned by international airlines, a spokesperson for the International Air Transport Association has said. The country, reported to owe 743 million US dollars, is facing a severe shortage in foreign currency, meaning investors cannot convert local currency to repatriate their profits. South Africa's largest listed property group is looking to expand its solar power capacity amid the country's worst rolling blackouts on record, implemented by state utility ESCOM. GrowthPoint, which owns 541 properties across several countries, said it will more than double renewable energy generation in the coming months to power its retail sites. And finally, a fund managed by BlackRock Alternatives is buying nearly a third of the shares in Kenya's 310 megawatt capacity Lake Turkana wind farm. Climate-focused funds like the Climate Finance Partnership are increasingly training their sites on Africa, which offers growing demand for clean energy and other climate infrastructure.